So this that's being shared is is it's suggested that it's a radical message of freedom. Freedom being beyond duality, beyond polarity, beyond any sort of limits or conditionality whatsoever. You could say it's the absolute being relative, it's emptiness being fullness, the infinite being finite, nothing being everything, all these sort of polarities just all seemingly one, all, all totally immediately what is. So non-duality is, is a pointer to, to, to that which can't actually be pointed at or to, because the pointing is everything as well. Um, and so this indescribable wholeness that's that sort of sort of conceptually talked about is it, it is it is seemingly beyond any limitations or boundaries or any, anything, everything. Um, what seems to happen is boundlessness being totally beyond direction, time or space can appear to be limited. So boundless energy can appear to be contracted energy. It can appear to be localized. It can appear to be timed. And this seems to happen in the human form, the human physiology, so boundless energy being everything and then, and then what seems to arise is a contraction in a human body. And when this contraction in the human body apparently takes place, it's felt as separate, it's felt as a, as a separate subject-object reality. So suddenly I am, there's a sense of being in the body looking through the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, the, you know, the body, it, it's, it's like it's objectifying everything. But it's also seeming to objectify thoughts and feelings as well. So it's a separate subject-object reality. It's some kind, sometimes called an artificial reality. And this, the separation experience which is actually not really separation, but it just may seem to be separate, is, a, is, is wholeness ju just separationing. It's, it's wholeness separationing. There's no real difference between separation and wholeness. If there was a difference, wholeness wouldn't be wholeness. It would be separate as well. So, so separation is just wholeness appearing as separation, not becoming separation because that would require time, it is simultaneously wholeness and separation, paradoxically. And, and when that energy is felt viscerally, what, what seems to come along is, is, is sort of an agitated feeling, like a, a sense of dis-ease somehow, like a sense of this isn't complete. So the personal experience feels dissatisfied and, and, and agitated and so this is when the seeking seems to emerge. So a path of, of how to get back to wholeness and what can happen for many is, is, is a, a material quest to find happiness or lasting fulfilment or maybe just some relief from this agitation of the contraction. Maybe just some sort of relief in substances, drugs, alcohol, sex, maybe relationships, maybe a partner or several might make me feel complete and whole again. It, it, can, it sometimes goes to therapy to, to sort of feel like it could be more of an integrated individual and therefore feel more connected to society to be more sort of socially appropriate and acceptable, to be accepted by others, that might make me feel whole again. Perhaps it goes to religion, 
to get some kind of prescription from a priest or a guru, a nun, a yogi, a sage, or a spiritual tradition as well. And all the time that this seeking is seemingly going on, there's this, there's this perpetual search for, for wholeness, for the kingdom of God, union with the divine, enlightenment, liberation, moksha, nirvana. There's many wonderful names for it. And as long as there's a sense of separation, the suggestion is, is that that will never be found. It can't be found because it is already everything. So personal enlightenment is, is coming out of this sort of sense of separation and disease and, and through the sort of innocence, <clears throat> it, it, it can't really grasp that enlightenment is beyond separation. It, 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 if anything, it's the end of the one looking for it, it's the end of the one searching to become personally enlightened. And so this separation energy seems to go on and on and on until it doesn't. And what can seem to happen, although wholeness being beyond direction, time and space, doesn't need anything to happen, actually. It's only for a sense of individuality and separation that there's a sense that something needs to happen. But beyond that need for something to happen, there can be a sort of a resonance to what's being shared here. There, there can be a sort of a, a felt sense for a body that, a, a sort of a ringing true, for want of a better term, and it's suggested that this doesn't involve the so-called individual experience. It doesn't involve someone, a separate subject. It's kind of a thinning or a softening. And all of these beliefs and ideas about me with my free will and choice, moving in a path in time, going in a direction, that whole sort of illusory construct can seem to, to diminish, to dissolve, to soften. And then that can be said to be the, the end of something that never really was happening, the end of this illusion of separation. But that doesn't happen to or for someone, it is the end of a sense of someone. And all, all that's left is, there's nothing being everything and, and just boundless freedom. So that'll, that's a bit of an intro, uh, that'll do for a bit of an intro. Um, and we can have a chat in person and online, comments on YouTube, comments on Zoom, reflections, questions, answers, uh, and all of that. And uh, what will happen is a, a, a response of some kind. And silence might happen, laughter might happen, uh, resistance or resonance, it, it's all just sort of arising. It's all just what is. Silence won't happen if I'm in the room. <laughs> <laughs> no better or worse. But my question, my question is, is the boundlessness self-aware? Is no. it aware of itself? No, no. So, so... That would be duality, right? Yeah, so, so what's being shared here is that awareness is duality which I know is totally radical, because a lot of people, you know, for the separate experience, awareness seems to be very reliable, stable, and, and secure and solid, feels very warm and cosy, and, and that, was the, that was the experience here for a long time. But, but what was exposed is that awareness requires a subject to be aware of an object. It requires a distance, so it's dualistic. What seems to happen for some is a, an end of that. It's like the collapse of the distance between subject and object, just merging into everything. No longer is there a sense of me aware of this or me aware of that. It's just what is. It's just the spontaneity, spontaneity and immediacy of what is. Well, the reason I ask is because 
caused the apparent separation or the contracted but that's not done by something that that's not that's not done by something with an agenda that just happens all by itself apparently but not you know it, yeah nothing is nothing is nothing is causing that nothing is deeming that to happen no no Okay. But all the time this is being talked about, something energetic can seem to be revealed. Okay. Because that separation happens pretty much all the time, or appears to all the time, I was wondering if something causes that, if there's something that's making that happen. Right, so to, to answer it like directly, there's no real time. So it doesn't happen all the time, because there's no real time. Oh, but the average person feels separate. I feel separate. It, they feel separate. I would say the majority of people feel separate. So, I just got myself out into the weeds. Never mind. This contracted energy being... Nothing is, but, but nothing is doing it. That's what I'm saying. Because yeah. it seems to be the norm. People feeling separate, all right? The majority of the, I would say the vast majority of people feel separate. So, uh, 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 is something doing that? No, it's just... With intent, with intent. No, no. There's okay. no intention, there's no agenda. Agenda lives in the story of me. And the contracted energy is illusory as well, so it, it, it doesn't seem to play by the so-called rules of cause and effect. It, it's you know, it, it, it might it, it might be um, it might seem to soften when when hearing a communication like this, or it might just seem to go on. And then some other some other sort of you know, people might be walking along and, and have never, ever even heard the terms non-duality or emptiness or shunyata or whatever else. You know, no sort of interest in religion or spirituality at all. And then there's a complete collapse of separation as well. So th there's just no rules. There's no rules. And there's nothing wrong with it either. There's nothing wrong with it. It might seem like it's, it's wrong or bad. But those wrong, bad, good, worse, or again, polarity, yeah. duality. I don't see it in terms of wrong or bad, I see it in terms of perplexing. I'm thinking, well, why would a wholeness, why would a wholeness manifest as not wholeness? And it's then true. attempt to become what it already is. It's not becoming separation. There's well, no... The illusion of separation. But, the, but it's not There's becoming... That illusion. It's not becoming the illusion of separation. There's no time. So wholeness and separation are simultaneously what is. There's no process to becoming separate or process to not be, being separate anymore. That is all sort of a story. That, that seems to be conjured up out of time being real in an experience of separation. It's not like that. But nothing is doing that. N no, no. There's no one behind the, the curtain in the... In the, <laughs> in the city of... <laughs> there was a little man behind the curtain. Yeah, that's, mm. that's pretty important. Yeah. All right, thank you.
Cheers. Cheers. Skull. Yeah, skull. Oh no, they're not comedy. What are the what are the words down there? Slancer. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You did good. Yeah. Yeah. Salute. <coughs> Same. I've heard sort of the, the less radical non-dual teachers, like say Adi Shanti, mm. say things like, um, although there is not an obvious causation between people who have um, a spiritual practice and people who realise non-separation, there is, there does seem to be like a correlation, mm. um, and when I try and, I suppose when I try to make sense of that, the fact that there doesn't seem to be a causation, like it can just happen seemingly completely randomly, mm. um, and on the other hand a lot of people who have had some kind of interest in spiritual spirituality or mm. practice deeply and intensely mm. are people who eventually realise a non-separation. I've also heard other people say that there is, to use uh, I guess a conventional religious term, that kind of God's pull is there and then the it look appears like the individual is doing things in order to realise a non-separation but really that pull is there and then the surface like activities that go along with it just seem to arise. Um, so it's not really the activities of the seeming seeker that are getting them there. They just arise mm. because it seems like a natural thing to do when the openness mm. is present. Mm. And I wondered if you'd have any thoughts on that. Yeah, it can seem to... Uh, this sort of um, for apparent falling away can seem... Uh, can seem to come about when there's an openness. Mm. Um, yeah. But the the reason, perhaps the reason why it's suggested that it is, it doesn't play by the rules, is because there there is no one in that already calling the shots and choosing which way to go. Mm. But but yes, it can seem like when there's a a readiness and an openness. Not to apologies if this sounds totally devoid of love or care. <laughs> or, you know, it, it, it might, but when there's a readiness for the so-called psychophysical organism, um, yeah, there can just seem to be a softening up. But as long as there's a, a sense that, like, that energy is really sort of tight, it, it, it seems to always feel the need to, to reaffirm itself and to go on living, you know, with, within its story of being in control. And, you know. Mm. I mean, yes, it seems as though, again, apologies for all the terminology and that, but as though time was real, um, as though time was real, um, it, it seems, it seems, uh, It seems unlikely that this would have fell away if it didn't first discover Buddhism and, and, and then Osho and, and, and him and her and all these other people and meditation and self-inquiry <coughs> and, and, then, and then eventually Tony. Um, it, it seems unlikely that this would have fell away, but there's no, there's no way of knowing that. Um, mm. But it seems likely that, that, it does seem like there's a correlation. Mm. But that would potentially be, some, be misleading 
to, to those who, who feel like, well, if I keep coming along to, to these meetings and, and Kenneth's or Jim's or Tony's or whoever else who seems to have fell away, then maybe I'll fall away, you know? And that would be a hope-based story which will probably subtly keep actually the, the perpetuation of separation going. Mm -hmm. So anything can seem to happen. <laughs> Is that because the seeker, like the seeking energy then, sees that as a kind of goal to attain? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, my, my absence, my, you know, it's, my absence is, is just as much another goal, potentially, as, as my enlightenment, or, or, or me merging with God, or whatever else. It, it, it's turned that into another object of gratification, and an object can only exist in relation to a subject. Yeah, and I've heard some people make a distinction between like that kind of seeking and the longing, which doesn't seem like it's coming from the seeker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the longing does seem to be beyond the the personal personal situation. Mm. It all gets a bit confusing because <laughs> it can do because. There is no real person, there is no real person, there's no real anything, ultimately, but, you know. What was suggested the other day, and again, definitions will take you in a million different directions, even though there's nowhere else to go, but <laughs> what was suggested the other day is that longing is perhaps the most refined seeking there is. It's, it's like the, the longing to stop longing, like yeah. to just want to come home. Yeah. <laughs> And then it's revealed that home is, of course, all, all there is, all, all there ever has been, all there ever will be, as though time is real, which it isn't. Yeah, sort of like the last longing. It seems like mm. it. That, that's what it seemed like for, for this. Mm. Resonance be cumulative or accumulative. It seems seems so, yeah. What's sometimes suggested in meetings like this is there can be an apparent phase of meing and being like a sense of separation and a sense of no, or an absence, absence and self-sense. And then perhaps meaning doesn't return. Or another way of putting that is meaning just sort of dissolves into the loving arms of <laughs> balance freedom. Do you think that after the non-separation has been seen, it is possible to still sort of re-identify the sense of separate self? I ask because I have heard some people speak of that kind of happening. Hmm. Um, so I. Uh, Mm. I wouldn't say so, no, no. Mm. But th this still uses an I and a me pronoun, because it's obviously convenient, I mean this could walk around and refer to itself in the third person like it's doing, but you know, but that all gets a bit sort of clunky and nonsensical for a lot of people, so, but yes, um, I, I wouldn't say so, but there's a, it's like a sense of position or centre, uh, localised, and that, mm. and when that's fell away it's just, that doesn't seem to return, but what again can seem to happen is a meaning of being like a, an in and out, mm. kind of like a light switch. Um, I also wouldn't say it's seeing, it's kind of like a, a collapse of seeing. Mm. It doesn't seem like I see wholeness or I 
have seen non-duality. It seems to be the end of, of an eye seeing anything. Seeing, of course, mm-hmm. still going on, but not on behalf of someone. Yeah, I got you. And that felt sense of centre seems to fall away as well. Seems, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it can be felt very visceral, like pervasive. It can feel very sort of, you know, tight and contracted and tense. It can be felt from head to toe, or it can be felt maybe even more sort of centrally in the in the abdomen or wherever else. Mm-hmm. What see what seems to arise on in dependence on that is personal, like this is all personal somehow. Mm. I, I'm thinking of teachers who have heard speak like um, say like Eckhart Tolle seemed like he had this sort of collapse. Mm. But then he will speak in terms of um, then after you know years eventually sort of having an identity again as a spiritual teacher Mm. and so is that just linguistic or is it that he didn't have the kind of collapse that you're speaking of or could it be something else entirely not sure really (laughs) not sure um It's hard to tell, it's hard to tell. It could be that there was a a glimpse and then a return. Mm -hmm. It could have been that that glimpse lasted a day, it could have lasted a decade and then it came back or... And although this will be provocative, it, it seems like that when when that whole sort of explosion or blown outness or you know glimpse whatever is, is talked about paired up with consciousness, it, it seems ambiguous somehow. Like that could be a collapse of separation because consciousness, by definition, means knowing. It means I am knowing this. I consciousness. You know, it's dualistic. It, it requires subject knowledge. At least that's the way that, in which it's being talked about, in this sort of context. <clears throat> but also, you know, according to the Oxford Dictionary, knowing it's knower, known. Whereas some would perhaps talk about it as though it's not anything to do with knowing, and then it's just an isness, an isness. It's a dangerous word, you know. It's, it seems to be a misleading word, yeah. that's, that's what's yeah. being suggested. But all words are potentially misleading, okay. so, so right. it can't really be talked about. Um, I was thinking about the teachings of, say, like um, Nisargadatta or Ramana Maharshi, yeah. and very much like advocating for staying with the sense of knowing or I am. And then I think what they're speaking to is that the collapse of it happens organically. Mm. Um, mm. Is that, in your opinion, just another way, or is it something totally different? It, uh, it seems to be a teaching that. Sorry for this. <laughs> <I'm ready>. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be a teaching that reinforces the sense of separation. Yeah. Mm. It's like the one thing that I can depend on and stay secure and felt like stable and secure from all like emotions and, and un- deemed unpleasant feelings and perceptions in order to stay felt safe, I will abide with the one thing I can rely on, which is myself, my sense of self, that I am this, that sense of separation until the body breathes its last breath and then it all just goes back, it all just dissolves. Yeah, 
Yeah, it makes sense to me. Like, it would give a sense of stability and that way it reinforced the separate sense of separation. My understanding of why they advocated for it was there was like a recognition that this is the sort of original separation, if you like, the mm. first, you know, the sense of I am. Yeah. Yeah. And to stay with that is like you're seeing like there's some kind of witnessing, which I know in college separation still, but of the um, of the first thing really that that seemed like it caused the separation. Mm. Like, even though, you know, they might not be separation. Yeah. But yeah. you know, like going back to the source of it is how I understand it and staying there. Mm, mm. So it's not like saying that this is it. It's saying like go back and witness where it all started and just hang out on that edge. Mm, mm. Mm. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. It, it um it didn't work ultimately <laughs> for this. It it, it, it just it seemed to perpetuate very, very subtly. I will add, it, it, it was it was comfortable for a while, mm. for a long time perhaps, but it just didn't didn't quite do it. It just it just seemed to miss the mark, you know. Um, so like you kind of hang out perpetually on that edge. Yeah, and 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 what would arise is disappointment when this <laughs> like fell out of the so-called present moment, or mm. or disappointment that. Oh no! I forgot to abide. I I I got lost in thoughts. It was, and and I'm not saying that that will happen for others or whatever, or that it was anyone's fault. It's just it, it it carried on, this sort of subtle agitated energy, and and with that came shame, you know, subtle shame, but shame nevertheless. And and this like was just sort of exposed as unnecessary for for this and for others, mm. like beyond that whole sort of hanging out in the presence of awareness knowingly or however else you'd like to word it beyond that was just a total allowance that non-self-abidance is just as wholesome as self-abidance and, and awareness or, or, or getting lost in thought like it's all wholeness it's all allowed it's all totally free to be what it is mm. and that seemed to do the opposite of abiding with the self it seemed to just unravel everything mm. that this thought that it was true about itself, myself, that all just... <coughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And in that story, in that apparent process of abiding, it still believed that it was in control, like that it was ha that it had free will and choice, and that it was all very sort of meaningful and moving in a direction towards wholeness. And that that all just sort of fell apart. Mm -hmm. And then it was revealed that wholeness is all there is beyond time, space, individuality, separation, experience, and so on. So would you say that it is the collapse of the sense of there being a doer that is key to the problem? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, so what seems to appear when there's this energy is like, it, it seems to misinterpret this tension for control. It seems to feel like this, this this sense of contracted energy is, is misinterpreted by the nervous system and the brain as, as a sense of there being someone in control. Mm -hmm. and, and when that sort of falls away, like I, you know, with a glimpse or whatever, it's so obvious that there's no control at all, that there's no... It's very there's underwhelming, so... A whirlwind, yeah. Underwhelming. Yeah, talk about that quite a lot, right? But mm -hmm. the actual process of what we call it is. Yeah. It's not like a whoa, I've got there now. It's literally yeah. the most underwhelming. Oh, it's, it oh, can. Yeah, it's sort of. It's sort of <laughs> oh a, man. <laughs> it's sort of a gentle wow and yeah. simplicity, but but you know <coughs> times in which you know it's maybe not quite exactly the same, but times in which there's a flow, like a, f a flow state, if you could call it that. It's like 
those are the times in which the body is totally relaxed, at ease, and yet thriving. And it's in those moments where there doesn't seem to be any sense of control. Mm -hmm. And you see, you know, sports people and, um, you know, surfers or, yeah, musicians. And we talked about MJ a few weeks ago and how that was like, wow, you know, it was... It was like it was so controlled, yet there was no one doing that. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and the more this agitated energy seems to tense up and contract, the more it feels like neurotically that it wants to be in control and it needs to be in control, but it's, but it's actually less, it's sort of constricting of what is, you know? Mm-hmm. And I guess similarly, white people like to get drunk or to get high, they lose a sense of control. Yeah, and inhibitions going with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So it's a, it's a, it, this is sort of the, this separate energy is kind of stuck and institutionalised by this predicament of wanting to be in control and yet wanting freedom. <laughs> mm. At the same time. Mm. you saw this question is because I think it's quite maybe philosophical or hypothetical in nature but I was wondering if you think the sense of separation sort of collectively ever comes to an end or is it more like because it's not in time anyway there isn't an ending Mm. Collective? Do you mean like on a world scale or? Yeah, or cosmic or whatever. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, what? I mean, more, more and more people do seem to be falling away, mm. which is interesting. Um, but what what this all seems to be is is not necessarily a process of of an energy falling away doesn't even seem to be the end of a process. What it seems to be is the end of, well, a a felt sense of there ever being a process. Like that there was ever really a process happening. Um, Feel your remembrance. Well, that can happen. um, But but that's why it's sometimes said that when the whole sort of collapse apparently happens, it's recognised that that it never happened, Mm. paradoxically, which doesn't really make any sense, but that seems to be the way it is. So it's like, it it never really happened, so it's like, it's a felt sense that there ever was a process happening in the first place. (laughs) (laughs) Because, you know, when when that energy is seemingly in place, it, it, it seems to by everything else being objectified, every objectified thing seems real somehow. Mm. So, so not just objects, chairs, tables, nature and the rest of it seems real, but, but thoughts seem real, the body seems solid and real, and therefore time and space seem real too. And, and as that sort of energy, which is making a distance, like, or seeming to create a distance, as that falls apart, Time and space, along with everything else, is sort of recognised as, as real and unreal, just sort of 
um, empty um, mm. and full at the same time. Mm. So the sense of time just becomes more sort of porous or, or empty. You know? Memories appear, thoughts appear, ideas appear. It's not on behalf of someone. Mm. And that just seems to be like immediate, just totally fresh and immediate. Whether that sort of answers the question, I'm not <laughs> sure. But, <laughs> but yeah, the, going back to the, the whole sort of collective, it, it does seem like more and more people are falling away. I mean, what seems to be happening in the world is, that, you know, all sorts of interesting things, you know, this collective desire to assert authority and but then a lot of authority falling apart and then you know there seems to be a lot of people walking around and falling away and you know it's it's interesting mm. By any seeming individual, there is still a sense of separation or a belief in the separate self. Would you say that illusion of that perpetuates? Is it there until the illusion? The illusion of like there being a separate self for the world and everything else. Is that perpetuated by beliefs? Yeah, whilst anyone still believes that that is mm. what's happening. Uh, it's hard to say, really. Mm. And it, again, it doesn't seem to play by any rules, mm. the imbalance, freedom, appearing as that. But, but what seems to be, the, the, um, the metaphor of a tornado is being used. Mm. It's like this, this boundless na natural energy Seems to seems to just conjure up a whirlwind. Uh, again, that's misleading because it suggests a process. But bear with. It seems to like conjure up a process of of whirlwind, and then all of these like you imagine like a tornado. All these objects and houses and bricks and cows and you know like <laughs> sort of getting sucked in there. And those would be like the beliefs and the opinions like circulating around this uh, this sort of you know, um, sort of agitated, restless energy. And, and those seem to be like the beliefs and the opinions. But of course the tornado doesn't depend on the, the objects that it apparently sucks in. So, you know, it, I mean, it, it seems to go on until it doesn't. Um, but an unraveling of the beliefs and the opinions can seem to come about. But there are some who will come along to meetings with remaining in this sort of sense of separation and yet and yet not believe that there is real individuality. There's a resonance and a receptivity, but there's still a subtle or a gross sense of mm -hmm. separation. Mm -hmm. So that it's like they conceptually there's a conceptual understanding taking place, but there's still very much a sense of separation and then and then others it's you know falls away more. Yeah. Yeah. And from what I gather, you're saying that there's nothing that can be done to make the sort of maybe bodily sense of separation fall away more quickly or No, no, it's a hopeless message. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ho utterly hopeless message. But of course, you know, it's hopeless but but also, you know, it doesn't, there's nothing actually wrong with it, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, again, in the, in the story, there might, this might all seem to be very much a problem that needs to be solved or fixed, um, but it's not really bad or wrong, it's just boundlessness appearing as contracted and limited. Of course, the body may still go on, you know, using, breathing and 
asana and other things to calm the nervous system and to help the body feel a bit more at ease and comfortable. Mm -hmm. So that's fine, but but it doesn't really see anything wrong with that agitated energy. And and if you know, again, getting into a story, but if that whole sort of energy fell away, it would be recognised that it was never really a problem, mm -hmm. and the body wouldn't care if it came back, it wouldn't care if it returned or not, it doesn't have any sort of preference. Is another way of saying that something like life wants everything? The seeker does. <laughs> the seeker might. It might want its cake and eat it. So the seeker wants everything, but life itself wants nothing. Or doesn't have a want. Doesn't have a want, yeah. yeah. It's just boundless freedom. Life in it, yeah. Mm. Would you say it's thought that um, keeps this felt sense of me? seems to alive uh, to thought believe in thought. No, no. It's felt more energetically. It's, it seems to be more sort of felt and energetic. And and out of that thoughts seem to emerge. So I thoughts seem to emerge. Because, you know, what can happen for some is, is like meditating doing the mindfulness of breathing or self-abidance meditation or whatever else. And all thoughts, or, or most, can seem to be absent, but there's still a sense of subject and object, there's still a sense of separation. So if it was as simple and as surface level as thinking, there could, it, it would be easier, <laughs> for want of a better term, you could, the body could just stop thinking and it would be over. It doesn't seem to be like that. Yeah. And the contracted energy does tend to not like thoughts very much and, and emotions of certain kinds. But as as though that contraction could fall away, thoughts and emotions are just just what they are, just what it is. No resistance. They might get a bit quieter because they have no one to talk to, but they're just unconditional love or unconditional freedom, thinking or feeling. <laughs> <laughs>